All right, so welcome to Speedrun Academy Part 1, Raise Your Palace. This is a series that I'm going to create in order to you know, show you all my strats about speedrunning certain missions, certain glitches and campaigns. Today I'm going to show you Raise Your Palace. I'm going to show you my strats and how to beat the mission as fast as possible with henchmen and an assassin. So let's jump right into the video and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. All right, so... Welcome to my tutorial for Ratio Palace. This is for speedrunning factions any percent. And it's a strat that is performed by myself. I found most of these strats for my own speedrun experience and I would like to show you them in this video. We're speaking of this mission, Ratio Palace. And uh, I'm gonna show you today how it's performed for the speedrun. My best time here, my best time around here is around five minutes and I think 40 seconds. To finish the mission with assassin level 13 14 usually and henchmen of course i'm on my you know practice character now but in order to get the same hp as a level 13 14 character i just put deadly or runes on my armor which doesn't affect my build at all let's start with the build the build is the following one um you will not do much damage here only all you do is you know spread deep wounds and run. That's all you're going to do. And the following build has 6 in Shadow Arts, 10 in Critical Strikes. This aligns with the attribute points of a level 13, 14 Assassin. Um, let's load it. We have the following skills. Jack Strike, Fox Fangs, Twisting Fangs, Unseen Furry, Death Charge, Dash, and Sprint. I'm gonna take the following Henchies. This is a, it's a kinda a YOLO strat, but it's a little bit quicker since you will only take one Monk, which is Sister Tai. We take both Mesmers, Ares Vosburg and Sigurd Halla. We take both Warriors, very important. We take Aeson and Kaijin. This is our Henji team, this is what we're going to use for the mission. And uh, yeah. So the mission is all about using the celestial skill provided by the Dragon Kuanavan yeah, that we freed in Unwakening Waters. And each Henji, each class has a celestial skill too in this mission. The most important one is the celestial skill of the warriors. I'm going to plant this in here. So, as you can see here, Storm of Swords does is, is a buff which uh, goes for 15 seconds on the group, on your team. You and all against allies deal 25 damage to all against foes each second. This is a very mighty skill and will provide the highest AoE burst in uh, this mission. I also want to show you the Celestial skill of the Elementalist, which is very important for bosses. The Ellie has that, which is Kai Jing, in our case here. And um, Celestial Storm is his Celestial skill, is very powerful, and he always casts it on, uh, on a boss. So if you ping a boss, he casts it on the boss. So this is very important to have in mind. It does, it creates a Celestial Storm at the target foe's location of 15 seconds and deals 40 fire, 40 cold, lightning and earth damage. It's a very strong skill and yeah, it will usually burst away the bosses. So, this is for the background information of the mission and now we go right into the strats. So let's enter the mission. Right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to stick Danica into the hitbox of Sin. Additionally, I already flagged the Henji team, as you can see in the top right corner of the screen, like outside of the gate. Um, as soon as the gate opens, the Henjis can already run outside, such that you know they don't just follow me and we don't lose time. In this mission, we can choose from six Henjis. We have three at the left side and three at the right side. We are going to choose Talon and Danica, since they have the ability to skip most of the fighting done in the mission. The skips they are performing is basically done by entering a cutscene where the entire Henji team, Brother Menlo and Master Togo, are getting ported to a location during the cutscene. So we can basically move around the entire team, including Togo and Menlo, in the cutscene so we don't have to fight certain groups as long as I can skip them myself and trigger the cutscene. This is not the case for Danica, for the first cutscene which is performed by Talon. So we have to get rid of Danica such that she doesn't follow us during the entire mission. What Danica would do otherwise is not getting ported to the cutscene. 
such that she still follows and if we have like enemies in between well the Ayanka just dies and yeah it's just not useful anymore what I'm going to do now is running the video in slow motion such that you can see my setup in order to stick Danica into the hitbox of Sin. It doesn't work all the time, it requires some practice and some luck and you know, especially patience. But uh, yeah, you will see most of the time it works if you practice it, but you're free to choose your own setup in order to get the same result. So I'm going to perform the Danica setup now. This starts with getting the celestial skill from Guanavang. I basically fill up my empty skill slot with Celestial Assassin, which is the Celestial skin skill for Assassins. I dash to the right side and choose Talon Silverwing as my first ally. So I'm going to choose him now. Then I run to the wall behind him and go to Donica and choose her as my second ally. Since we choose two allies now for the mission, the gate will open and my flag Tangies, they can start running outside. The setup is now performed by running into this corner. Stick to the wall, it's important that Donica follows you in a straight line. Wait for Donica to completely follow you, such that she stops running. And as soon as she stops, stops running, you will click the ground there behind Sin. You will see this pattern at the floor, you know, this, this axis, or you know, this, what is it called? Like, um, yeah, these patterns, and try to click there where two straight line meet like the cross wait until your character stops running and then click four crosses away from you again on this pattern on the floor all right so i'm gonna run there i look to the left and click exactly there at the left side of the gate basically at the corner of that pillar at the edge of that pillar now if everything goes smooth, Donica will start following you, but she will follow you into the hit, uh, Sin's hitbox and get stuck there, as you can see here. So she so just follow me, but she's basically stuck now, you know, because of Guild Wars 1. You know, her hitbox is now stuck into Sin and she doesn't move at all. You can see it here. Donica is completely eliminated now from the mission and you can basically keep going now without uh, her. But she will still perform her cutscene skip. Right, so let's go to the next part. So the mission starts now and we are fighting our way through the to the first boss, the warrior boss. And on the way we are encountering one group, which I'm going to show you now. So what we have here is the first group. I'm going to flag the Henji here on the middle of the stairs and going to pill them. You want to ping them such that the warriors are stacking them on the corner up there, you know, that they cannot reach our range DPS, our mages, etc. That way we can do a lot of AoE DPS plus, you know, just burst them away. It's important to always ping an elementalist. All you have to kill is the three elementalists and the warrior assassins. Then you can skip the rest. There's like a monk, a few mesmers, you can skip them easily. What you want to do now is you flag them here on the floor, you're going to pull the next team and you're going to use your celestial skill, Star Strike. And then you want to dash away, such that you lose aggro from the elementalists and pull the warrior boss, which is this guy, Sword, Sword Ancient Kai. Unflag your Henjis and then basically wait until everyone is stacked up and your Henjis are in range of the boss. You have to ping the boss now, this will activate the elemental storm, you can see here this fire is is Meteors, which is the Celestial Storm from the Elementalist, and as soon as the boss dies, you want to use Death Charge and jump up to the Spirit of Famine. So, here we're going to make a quick break. So, since we choose Talon as our first ally, we have the first cutscene now here. In this cutscene, Talon will basically sacrifice himself to close two portals, which would summon additional um, you know, enemies, Shirokans. What also happens is that everyone gets ported up now to the entrance of this hallway here. As you probably noticed, there is still some enemies on the stairs you know, before this room. And by porting up with Death Charge and everyone also getting ported up during the cutscene, we can skip all of these groups to fight them. But you have to wait like a second until you see everyone showing up in the cutscene and then you can skip it basically, which is what I'm going to do now. 
So as soon as everyone is here, as you can see, you skip the cutscene and you flag the hinges forward on top of the stairs. When you go forward and you go up the stairs, then you will encounter the necroboss and additional melees, Shiroken warriors, which you want to pull, you know, such that they start running down. When everyone is stacked up, the warriors should use their skills, Storm of Swords, you can see it there, and you see these 25 damage numbers, which is basically the damage dealt by, uh, you know, the skill. You also summon your Celestial Assassin, and you just wait until everyone is dead. So, let's wait for this. And when everyone is dead, you want to flag everyone up, slowly. You want to see and check that everything is dead, that nobody gets stuck in the stairs. And there is the boss, the Necroboss. Normally the Ali would use his Celestial Storm on the Necroboss, such that he's already low health. Additionally, the Necropod sacrifices health with his skills, which also makes him much lower. So let's come to the next part. So the next part is the Ranger boss. You want to again flag up everyone, stick everyone together. You want to pour it up. You want to blind them with Unseen Fairy. Ping the boss, you know, such that the Ellie uses his storm. You will see the storm now, Celestial Storm plus the 25 damage numbers, which is again Storm of Swords casted by the Warriors. You just apply all these AoE damage, flag them together, and then go right, go through this gate, and keep left, such that you don't pull as much of these Shiroken ranges to the right side. Now, this is a critical part, let me pause here. So, the next boss is the Ellie boss. You can see it on top of the stairs already. I already flagged the Hengis in front of the stairs. It's important that you pull the Ellie boss, use your Celestial skill, and ping him, such that hopefully, the warriors, you know, will stick him or stuck him into the stairs to the right side. So, let's see. I pull the Ellie boss. The Ellie boss approaches me. I ping him such that the warriors will focus the Ellie boss. The goal is just that the Ellie boss doesn't reach your Henji team. You know, otherwise he would deal a lot of damage with Starburst, etc. It would just one shot everyone. If the Ellie boss is dead, flag the Henji's on top of the stairs such that they start moving. Unflag them now, as soon as you enter the second stair. Everyone will follow you now, hopefully. And you will flag them here, finally, and then you just run to the next part. Now, um, you remember we took Donica, and Donica has, an, has a cutscene skip just as Tall and Silver Ring. And for that, we have to reach the plateau after the next bridge. And there's another cutscene, you can immediately skip the cutscene, such that everyone gets ported. Additionally, everyone gets rest. You will see this now. So everyone is rest now, and we can run up these stairs here. What you want to do now is flag the hinges on top of the stairs, such that everyone stacks up, and the warriors can use their Storm of Swords, such that you can get rid of these rangers. The reason for that is that they will block you from, you know, just, you know, running by and advance to the next point, so you definitely want to get rid of them as quick as possible. Additionally, you are still being chased by all the stuff that you skipped while running here, so you kind of have a limited amount of time to to kill everything before you know everyone catches up with you and they just kill you. There's usually Ellie's that chase you, and you definitely don't want to. You want them to reach you. All right, so everyone is flagged. You will see how Storm of Sword is casted. You see the 25 damage numbers, and as soon as the Rangers are dead and the melees, you just want to run around the Necros here and the Rangers. It's important that nobody gets stuck, so you have to be a little bit experienced with flagging and with running, but the goal is that everyone can just, you know, rush rush past these uh, these Shirokens over there. So we're going to stack up now. I go in front. There will be a small dialogue between Togo and Menlo. You want to wait until Togo and Menlo is, you know, is following you, like right now. And then you want to flag the Hanges forward, like to this point. Now it's important to stay left and be healed up. And pull everything, it's fine, this is kind of a YOLO rush. As soon as everyone reached the flagging point, you want to use your Celestial skill, as right now, and want to clear off a few of these um, Shirokens for a few seconds. Good. We can advance now, you unflag the Hengis, such that they follow. Toga and Menla should follow you too. And you want to kill these Ritu boss as fast as possible, because this is the trigger for the next cutscene, or for the gate to open. Just spam him. Pinging, and you will see that the Ellie will use his Celestial Storm, which is usually enough to kill the boss. There's another cutscene now, you want to skip it, and now you're pretty much set and safe. You're just gonna flag everyone on top of this bridge, 
and just spam all of your skills, you know, the Celestial Assassins, which is going to happen now. You can also blind the Asa boss. Storm of Sword is being casted now. It's basically, yeah, it doesn't look good for the enemies here now. And you just want to finish everyone as quick as possible and just, yeah. Go for the bosses first. Everything else will die anyway due to Storm of Swords. Right, there we go. When the monk boss is dead, he will get two cutscenes, which is the end of the mission, end of Reju Palace. And you're entering Imperial Sanctum, which is the end mission in Factions, where you have to kill Shiro. So for this test run, for this run to show here in the video, I had 6.13, which is a good time, something you want to aim for in a speed run. So this was Speedrun Academy Part 1, Reishu Palace. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Here you have the you know, my link to my Twitch channel where I usually stream the speedruns live starting at 4 to 5 p.m. Central European time. I usually stream five to six times a week. You also have my Instagram and my Discord channel. Would love to see you there. Leave a follow, leave a like. There's more in the more in the description below. And yeah, enjoy some of the Shinjiya music. I'm out. Thanks for watching. See ya.